Many people stray away from auctions because they're initially very overwhelming. There's a lot of people there, there's a lot of horses, you can't understand the auctioneer, and then on top of that, you're not exactly sure how much you're gonna get your horse for or what they're gonna go for. I'm gonna break it down step by step how exactly you buy a horse at an auction. The first thing you need to do when you decide to go to an auction with the intent of purchasing a horse is you need to find out how you need to pay for the horse if you're going to buy them. Do you need to have cash on hand? Can you pay through a debit card or do you pay through a check? The reason for this is every livestock yard is different. When I bought Yoshi at auction, I think that livestock yard only took cash. So I had to make sure I went to the bank beforehand and got the cash. But then at some higher end auctions, you're able to pay for your horse through a debit card or things like that. The next thing you wanna do is make sure you have access to a trailer when you go to the auction. So that means you need to bring that transportation with you if you are planning to purchase a horse. If you don't have a trailer, even if you're not exactly sure if you're gonna get a horse, but you're like, okay, maybe I'm looking, bring the horse trailer or find a friend to come with you and bring their trailer. It can be very stressful if you have bid on a horse and won the horse to then have to figure out how to get that horse home. Once you have purchased the horse, and the horse leaves the pen where you have bid, that horse is now your responsibility. So no one is going to be helping you find a way to get that horse to your farm. Sometimes if you go to a higher end horse auction, they will have transportation available for that horse to be brought to your home, but of course for an extra fee. So that's all stuff to look at. If you're just going to a local auction with horses, you need to have your own trailer there. My next point is making sure you arrive with plenty of time to look at all the horses. So if the auction is starting at one time, you wanna make sure you get there a few hours early just because you wanna be able to look at each horse that you're interested in in detail and look them over and interact with them and all of that stuff before you actually go and bid. Once you get to where the horse auction is happening, the very first thing you're gonna need to do is go to the office and register for your bidding number. I've been to auctions before when you registered for the bidding number, you had to give them like a debit card or something just so you have to go back and get it and that way you can't just like exit and leave with an animal or things like that. Not every auction is like that, but just keep that in mind. Your bidding number is what is going to buy your horse if you wanna bid on the horse. If you don't have a number, you're not gonna be able to bid. So make sure you have that. Once you've gotten your bidding number, then you can go look at the horses. And so what I recommend doing in this time frame is number one, finding the horses you are interested in. So whether you've been watching the auction on social media or things like that, usually auctions will post the horses coming in and giving some details about them um, beforehand. Sometimes they don't post their horses. So you may go to the auction and you see a horse that wasn't on social media. At every auction, you should be able to interact with the horse and maybe go in their pen and look them over. If the seller is there and they don't want you going into the pen, I'm gonna say that's probably a red flag and you may not wanna look at that horse. Some things to look for, number one, look at the horse's temperament. You also wanna look and make sure the horse is not possibly drugged. So if a horse is drugged, usually their head's gonna be hanging really low, their lip is gonna be droopy, and they're just gonna be out of it. So look for that because a lot of people, unfortunately, will drug their horses to sell them at an auction. You wanna make sure you can touch the horse all over and pet them. You can look at their feet and make sure they have good feet and that they'll pick up their legs. You can look at the horse's teeth to get kind of a rough estimate of how old they are. And for more information on that, we actually have a whole video where I share some tips on how to tell how old a horse is by looking at their teeth. So I'll put the link to that video in the description. My next point I've only really seen at higher end auctions, but if this is available to you, I highly recommend you take advantage of it. But some auctions will have a separate arena where if you are interested in a horse, you will be able to ride and try out that horse ahead of the auction. Colin and I went to an auction recently where everyone was out trying out the horses and riding them. But that was actually the first time I had ever seen that at an auction. So if that is available, definitely do that. You get to see how the horse will respond um, under saddle, but also in the chaos of everything going on. So usually there's a lot of horses in there and there's a lot of people around. It's kind of like a show setting. And so you can get a great idea of how that horse acts and responds in those situations. Now it's time to go to the pen for bidding. I would say there's not really any specific place to sit to get recognized or to get the higher bid. There are people down on the floor looking for people raising their hands in bidding. 
So wherever you are seated in relation to the pen, I don't really personally think it matters. Pick a good seat where you can see the horses and make sure you can hear the auctioneer. The first thing that's gonna happen when a horse comes out to be bid on is the auctioneer will share some things about the horse. And at this point, you can actually understand what the auctioneer is saying. <laughs> but they'll say like the horse's age, the horse's height, the breed it is, and possibly what it's been trained to do and its experience. And then the bidding will start. And so the horse will be ridden or led around the arena so you can kind of see it move and people can get an idea of what they would be bidding on. I would say do not be the first person to bid. The auctioneer will initially present a higher number and they will start there. And if no one bids, the auctioneer is gonna drop the price. And so usually what I've seen at auctions, the horse will come in, the bidding will start at a higher number and then it will slowly drop if no one starts bidding. And then when it, when it gets to like a very reasonable price, that's when people will start bidding. Now some tips for how to understand the auctioneer. And I know this is probably the most overwhelming point of bidding on a horse at an auction. So the first thing to really take note is the only thing you really need to be listening for is like the first word of the auctioneer's sentence and that will usually be the price that he or she is at. Everything else, the auctioneer is saying that you can't really understand, they're not saying anything important that you need to know. The auction is never gonna just go on to where you're not understanding and then it just ends and the bidding is done. Usually the auctioneer will stop and take breaks and say something else or stop and really make sure that, okay, this is the final bid. It's never where it's just like a cut and dry, boom, it's done. Don't get too freaked out when it comes time to bid. Make sure you're listening for that number, that first thing the auctioneer is saying. If you end up bidding and it's way higher than you initially thought it was, you can always say that. Nothing is final until you go to the registration office and pay for the horse you have bought. So when you are down and it's bidding happening, you don't have to be scared that you're gonna bid and then regret it. Well, one of the great things about auctions is that you can get horses for a very reasonable price. One thing I've noticed there is the bidding price isn't always gonna be accepted by the seller. So I've seen in a lot of auctions where the bidding went to a certain number, you know, the final bid was placed, but then the seller wouldn't take the bid because it wasn't what they were looking for. They wanted a higher number. So at that point, what happens is let's say a horse the highest bid is for $5,000. The auctioneer will go $5,000. They'll look at the seller to see if the seller will accept that. The seller may go like that. No, they are not gonna accept it. At that point, the auctioneer will say, that's too low, the seller wants, let's say the seller wants $6,000. The auctioneer will say, the seller wants $6,000. Is that something you can do? And at that point, you can either say, no, I don't wanna do that or yes, you can do it. And at that point, sold, the horse goes to you. Just keep that in mind, because if it is a really nice, well-trained horse, and it's going for a very reasonable price, the seller does not have to accept that. Once you have bid on the horse and you have won the horse, what's gonna happen is one of the auction workers will give you a piece of paper. And on this paper will be the animal's registered number that they are registered under at the auction. So you're gonna take that paper with you and you can go straight to the office where you got your registration number to bid and you're gonna pay for the animal there. You do not pay the seller directly, you always pay at the auction office. So take that piece of paper, present them with the paper. That paper represents that you have won the animal. You will pay up at the office and then from there, you can go collect your horse. Another thing to mention is that the auction office will give you a bill of sale to prove that you have paid for that animal and the animal is now yours. As soon as you pay for that horse and you have that bill of sale, that horse is now your sole responsibility. There's no one else at the auction who is gonna be responsible for that horse. That means you need to go pick it up out of its stall and get it on the trailer and head home. No one else is gonna be feeding it or watering it or anything like that. So you don't wanna just leave it there, if you know what I mean. You wanna make sure you get it and it's time to go home and enjoy your new horse. Once you get your horse home, now it's time to take care of it. And so if this is an area where you want more confidence in and knowing exactly how to take care of your horse, check out my online course, The Horse Care Keys to Success. In this course, I break down every aspect of horse care and very specific things you need to know. And so I'll put the link in the description 
It's at shop.equinehelper.com for you to check out.